All right, guys, welcome back to D335, Introduction to Programming in Python. Um, if you haven't already, I highly recommend going to watch the first and the second video. Um, I'll leave the link to the playlist in the description below. Uh, also, if you watch the first and second videos, I've added more information to the description. Um, I've added a, a link to, I guess, what would be WGU's code repository, almost like a GitHub for where you can find my solutions and source code. Uh, just because if I copy paste the code into the description or the comments below, it doesn't format it properly. But if you click the link below uh, the video, you'll be able to find uh, what I'm talking about. But anyhow, uh, as we're looking now into question uh, number three, problem number three uh, in chapter 34, it's asking us to create a Python solution uh, to accept an integer that represents the index value for any of the five elements in the following list. And it gives you the list of uh, called various data types, and this is these are the elements within that list. And so uh, we wanna use the built-in function type. Uh, the type function is something that's in Python already. You don't have to import it, it's already part of the library. Um, it'll be the same for your uh, pre-assessment and your practice exam, or your actual exam. And you wanna get its uh, name attribute and I'll put the, the data type, which is either integer, float, a boolean, a string, uh, based on what value it is, uh, what element, um, what value it has within that list, within this list. And so should be in this format, and if this is a way to test your input, your code, type in this input, you should get this back. And again, I've covered this in detail in the first and second video, so going forward, I won't be really touching on it as much. But you always wanna test your code, your program, on your objective assessment, you will not have the option to su uh, submit and then get feedback based on uh, the test. You know, if you've got one out of five right, two out of five, five out of five, uh, you, it'll be submit and move on to the next problem. But you can test your code. Uh, it'll have a develop mode of sort where you can enter your input uh, down here and you'll get your output and make sure your input is giving you the output it has back. And make sure to always test that because that's a way to uh, test if your program is working properly. And so jumping right in to the problem. And again, um, as I've covered in other videos, Normally your pre-assessment, your practice exam, and your objective assessment, your actual exam, will have comments here that give you a little bit of information um, in some context. You know, instead of you having to scroll up and look, you should have it here, and it gives you a little bit of hints. So use that to your advantage. Also, um, since I've deleted all this, because I've gone back and done it, it'll, all, it'll already have the list typed in for you, so make sure you use that. And so, well, assuming that was already there, we'll go ahead and move forward with our code. First, we want to create an index value. We want to create a variable that's going to store whatever index we're choosing. And uh, we can just name that something simple. We'll name it index value. And this is going to be an integer input because, again, right here, our user input needs to be an integer. Um, and so we'll use the integer data type and just input, uh, ask for input. So moving forward, we want to pull an element, which is going to be uh, a value within, within this list. So we'll name that, that variable element. And this will be equal to um, the value that's going to be the value will be, will be pulled from this list that's already given to us. So again, this list can be called whatever you want. I recommend just keeping it what it already has uh, listed for you in a prompt in the question. So element will be equal to various data types. And for this, we're going to pull this value. We're going to use our index value that the user provides to pull from the various data types list. And so we're just gonna add va index value here. In other words, whatever number we put here is gonna pull that position from this list. So we, end again, and if you don't know how a uh, list works or how indexing works in Python and in programming in general, you don't start counting at one, you actually start at zero. So move up here with me. And so we have, you know, 516, 112.49, true, meow, and then, you know, Western Governors, University, Apple, one, pair, five. Uh, most times, you know, when you're counting, you would think one, two, three, four, five. With programming, in your, when you're indexing, you start at zero. So you go zero, one, two, three. So if I were to ask you, you know, what, what position is meow in the list? Well, you, you wouldn't count one, two, three, four. No, you start at zero. So zero, one, two, three. So meow is index value three. And so essentially, if I ask you to type in the number three, if the user provides the number three, 
then our program is going to tell you what data type that value is. And so that's what our program is doing. It's going to index or pull the position from the various data types and save it to a, to a variable called element. Okay, so now we need to create a data type uh, variable. This is telling us to use a type function and get its name by using the dot name attribute and now put the data type as an integer, float, boolean, or string based on the input value. So again, based on what the user provides, it'll tell you um, what your data what your data type is. And so we want to create a variable called data type again. You can name your variables whatever you wish to. I recommend keeping it simple, keeping it straightforward. If possible, follow what the prompt tells you. In this case, it tells us to use data type and index value. So we're using that for these. Uh, your index, your variable name, excuse me, will not matter. Your exam will not grade you based on whether you use the correct variable name or not. The name doesn't matter. Uh, simply that your code outputs and performs the way it should. But again, keep it congruent, keep it easy to understand. Um, following PEP 8 best practices, which you know tells you how to quote unquote write beautiful Python code. So you want to make sure to name your variable something that makes sense. And so just keep it simple data type. All right. And so what we're going to type is type element. And what this is doing, um, this portion of the code right here, type element, this is going to find out uh, what type of data is stored within the element uh, variable, right? Within this variable, what type of data are we storing? So for example, you know, are we storing an integer, a string, a list, a dictionary, a tuple, you know, whatever, so forth. So that section of code will be this. Again, it's just gonna find out what type of data is stored within the variable element. So type, what type is stored within element. And so uh, next thing we wanna do, we want to extract the name of that type as a string. And so we'll use this. So it's gonna be a period, two underscores, name, two underscores. What this is doing, this is extracting the name of that type um, of data as, as a string. For example, instead of us getting something that looks like this, it'll just give us back int or int for integer. Okay, so that's what this section of the code is doing. Again, because this is what the prompt is telling us to do right here. So going forward, moving on to the final part, the print statement. Printing, again, at first and second video, sound like a broken record here, but very essential to know. F string formatting is very important to use in your exam. Become familiar with it and just get lots of practice with it. Trust me, you'll get lots of practice with all these questions and practicing. So again, just a print statement, lowercase f, and so again, looking back at the output, the format it should be in should be element index, uh, element as a literal string, you know, type out the word element, index value is going to be a variable, colon, space, remember white spacing matters, and then your data type variable. So if you need a, a example, element four is equal to a tuple. So element, whatever the index value, again, the user input is four, which gets saved to the index value here. So index value takes the value of four because that's what the user provides. So element, whatever value provided, which is four, colon, space, and that's a tuple uh, data type. So that gets printed here. So print f element is going to be a literal string. We're actually just gonna type it out. It's not a variable, it's a piece of string that we're typing out. So then you remember to leave a space here because white spacing matters. You don't wanna have a have it all together here, leave a space. So that way it'll, your code will output that uh, literally as you type it in. And then you want to pull whatever the index value is. So index value, we'll assign that variable to it. Then use your, col your colon and space. And then simply pass the data type variable into this. But again, this is why I said, if you can use the variables that the question gives you, it'll make your program run so much smoother, so much easier to read. As you can see, we basically could have almost copy pasted this into here. Um, and, and been good to fit because uh, we use the same variable in index underscore value and data underscore type as above. And so very straightforward. We have our list here. We have a variable called index value that's going to take user input, save it as an integer. Then we're going to have a variable called element. It's going to pull whatever value this is here, whatever you, you uh, whatever value the user tells it to, right? Whatever position the user. So like say I want to retrieve the value three. So zero, 
one, two, three, right? So whatever the user inputs here, it'll retrieve that from the list. And then we're simply gonna have it print out the data type. Set the variable data type to pull the type of data stored within the element and have it return the name instead of uh, this. Finally, our print statement. So again, always make sure to test your input because we could go straight into submit mode uh, and walk through this right now to show you. You won't have submit mode in your exam or in the practice exams as I'm sure. Um, in this case, yes, our code passed, but how can we know that, right? We don't have the option to go back and fix it. So you wanna go to develop mode, always take the example input they give you. The reason being, if you have the example input, you can make sure it matches the expected example output. So when we type in four, if our program works as designed, it should match this correctly, right? Capital E in element, space four, colon, space, tuple. So now what happens if we put in the value of, uh, of, two, of one, for example, what, is, what does that give us back? Element one float, is element one a float? Uh, it is because, you know, as you can see here, it has numbers after the, the decimal point. An integer is a whole number, so it does not. Uh, and you would think, well, isn't one a integer? No, because again, remember, you start at zero. So this is zero, this is one. So one is actually 112.49, which is a float. So that's why it gives us element one because we input, we asked it for the input of one is a float. So what happens, uh, for example, if we're wanting to pull the word meow from here, sorry. Right? So we'll count zero, one, two, and three. So we'll type in the input of three. And it's a string, right? Cause it's just text saved within quotes. So that's a string. All right, and so anyhow, uh, that's a very straightforward solution. Again, your exam will have, your exam, your practice assessment, will have your ver uh, various data types, whatever your list is called, already ent entered for you. So create a, a variable to hold whatever the user input is gonna save, create some uh, a variable that's gonna hold the element name uh, that's pulling the user input, that's using that to search the list, and then save that. Appreciate it for you. If you have any questions, just leave a comment in the description below and I'll do my best to get back to you.